Hell is a literal place of fire. It's a literal place of fire in the center of the earth. So how do we know it's in the center of the earth? Well, because every time, a lot of the times in the Bible when, when it mentions hell and it talks about hell, it's always down, it's always low. It's always, you know, in uh, one, one verse says the heart of the earth. We'll just look at those real quick. But in Deuteronomy 32, uh, 22, this is the first mention of hell in the Bible. It says here, For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So we live on a, you know, I believe a round earth. I know there's an argument out there of whether the earth is flat or whether the earth is round. I personally believe it's round. I'm not convinced yet that the earth is flat. So we live on a round spherical type earth. If hell is low, if hell is beneath, if you go to the lowest hell, it has to be in the center of the earth. And it's interesting that even science you know, nobody knows what's in the center of the earth, but you know, molten lava comes out of volcanoes and science says that the center of the earth is just this molten lava and fire. So it's just funny that even the, the scientific communi community admits that in there it's, it's hot and it's, and it's dark, just like the Bible describes it. Uh, let's go to Psalm 55, 15. We'll just look at a couple of verses quick. It says, let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them as for me i will call upon god and the lord shall save me uh let's have a look at ezekiel here ezekiel 31 16 it says here in ezekiel i made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when i cast him down to hell with them that descend, that descend into the pit. So again, down, down, and descend. And all the trees of Eden and the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with them, unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. So the Old Testament verses are sometimes prophetical. So you've got, you know, it mixes between a, a, a physical scenario and then a spiritual. Um, but we see there that hell is always referred to as uh, going down. I'll just show you one from the New Testament as well quickly. In Matthew 11. This is uh, Jesus here condemning the cities. And it says, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell, for if the mighty works which had have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. So hell is, I believe, in the center of the earth. So if you were to go down into the lower parts of the earth, into the center of our spherical world, you would reach hell. But nobody knows what's down there because nobody can drill that far. You know, I heard an analogy once that the, on an apple, they, they say that the, the skin of the apple is thicker than the crust of the earth, which is the crust is the, the earth that we live on. So the, the earth is really big and it's really deep and nobody has even been able to, I think, drill through even the crust, let alone get down to the next layer below there. So earth is, uh, hell is in the, in the center of the earth. Let's go to Mark 9, verse 43. So hell is a, is a literal place because a lot of people will say, oh, no, hell is not literal. It's just this you know, emotional burning when you're separated from God. Or, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, hell is on earth. And they'll say, you know, when you're going through hard times and, you know, and everything's going bad for you, that's hell. No, no that's not hell because, it's in, first of all, it's in the center of the earth and, and it's a place of fire. Um, look at what uh, Jesus says here in Mark 9. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So you see, this is a fire in hell that burns but does not consume, just like the, the burning bush where, where God appeared unto Moses and the bush was a light, but the bush was not consumed. It's almost like the same fire is in hell where it burns and you have a conscious punishment, but it doesn't consume you because the worms in hell don't, aren't consumed and die. 
And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So when you read a passage like this, and I usually will take somebody to this passage when they say they don't believe in hell, because if, if hell did not exist, if hell was not a literal place, why would Jesus be warning about it? Why would Jesus be saying, you know, it, it's better that you cut off a hand, it's better that you pluck out an eye, it's better that you cut off a leg than go to this place if it doesn't even exist. So that doesn't make sense. If hell is not a literal place, why would Jesus so sternly warn against it? And this is not the only place. And you know, I, I've, I've, I've read and quoted this passage so many times that sometimes I just read over it and don't really realize what it's saying because it's pretty gruesome. Can you imagine ripping your eye out? I mean, we hear the word pluck and we think like plucking a fruit off a tree, like it just like comes off really easily. <laughs> but if you pluck your eye out, I mean, can you imagine like just tearing your eye out? And, and, but that being better than going to hell. And you know, the, the, the cutting off your foot, where was that? That was, um, was that the first one? No, hand offend thee. 45, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. You know, when I read that verse, it reminds me of that movie, um, that movie Saw. I don't know if you guys seen, saw that movie, but it's, it's, I remember watching that first one ages ago. And it was so disgusting because he's like in a room or whatever. And then it's like some uh, like torture chamber and he's like chained. And I, can't remember, I can't remember the whole plot of the movie, but basically the, the movie culminates to the end where he has to decide, do I saw my leg off to get, to, 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 to get rid of this chain and climb to, to freedom? Or do I stay in that room and continue to be tortured? Uh, something like that. And it just reminds me that, you know, at the end of the movie, he decides that it is worth it. That it is worth it. He gets that saw. That's why the movie's called Saw. And he starts hacking his leg off and then he cuts his foot off and then he's like climbing to the door because he realized it's like this verse says, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. And if you watch that, it's, it's, I don't think you actually see him cutting his leg off, but just the, the thought of it, him sawing it off. But you know, that's the sort of imagery that God is using to say, don't go to hell. You know, that hell is so bad that you would rather saw your leg off and climb to life maimed than stay in that room um, having two feet and, and, and be cast into hell. So why would, why would Christ even warn about it if it didn't exist? I look at what it says here in Matthew 26. Uh, it says here, The Son of Man goeth as it is written, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. So talking about Judas here, you know, betraying the Son of Man, and obviously I don't believe Judas was saved, so he went to hell. But we can take this principle here that it's almost like the Bible's telling us here, hey, if you live and you die and go to hell, it, it would be better that you were not even born. That's how bad hell is. And you know, you know, sometimes people will, when you're out soul winning, like people will joke about hell and they'll say like, oh, you know, I don't mind going to hell. You know, I don't care whether I go to hell or not. It's because they don't, they don't realize what hell is like. Because if they honestly understood what hell was like, they wouldn't say things like that. Nobody would want to go to hell. Why would you want to go to a place of fire and torment forever and ever and ever? You wouldn't. It's because they just don't believe that hell is truly what Jesus Christ um, says it is. So the Bible tells us here, hey, it's, it's better that you were not even born than to live a prosperous life and then die and go to hell. So, you know, obviously two applications we can get from the fact that, that hell is a real place, that, you know, it's good that we're, we're saved here, you know, so people that aren't saved need to get saved, because if they're not, then this is what awaits them. Um, but also for us as believers, we, it should motivate us, right? We need to be reminded that hell is real. Hell is the reason why people need to hear the gospel, people need to hear about Jesus Christ, and that ought to motivate us to get the gospel out there so that we know at least this suburb and this area has been reached with the gospel. So, you know, soul winning is not a game. It's not something that we're playing here. What, what we do Saturdays and Sundays does make a difference. You know what I mean? So um, we need to all be involved and... Uh, hell is, is one uh, reason that should motivate us to uh, 
do more soul winning or when we go soul winning, we do our best, you know, to talk to people and do our best to um, explain to people um, about hell and about how to be saved.